So, good morning, everyone. First of all, thank for your presence here. Uh, my name is Andrea Mantelato, and I'm thrilled to present my thesis, named as Threatening Machine Readable Constructive Element Precedence from Beam Models. Okay, so uh, first of all, let me just briefly introduce this morning presentation agenda. We are going to start with uh, introduction and the literature review, contextualizing and defining what are precedence relationships, as well as presenting the past works as as well the objectives of this this dissertation. So jumping through the methodology, uh, we present the procedure. And we discussed the results based on two study cases, and then we finally concluded with some insights as well as presenting a blueprint to achieve the forthcoming steps. As, okay, so let's get it started. So, does anyone here recognize those two pictures provided on the screen? Uh, so, those pictures were taken after the conclusion of the Big Dig project. The Big Dig project was the most expensive highway project in the whole United States. It all began in 1982, but the construction itself only started in 1991, and it was originally scheduled to finish it in 1998, but after several issues involving the construction schedule, mostly it only concluded, it was only concluded eight years later, which led to a cost over one of almost 200%. So I'm bringing those, this example to illustrate how a good planning analysis is important for the overall construction process. process. And in this dissertation, we are focusing in one part of the planning analysis that is the precedence relationships. So what are precedence relationships? They are logical links between constructive activities or objects. Uh, so, in this example provided on the screen, conditioning the second floor column to be built before its overlying beams is a good example of precedence relationships. So, they are important because they are responsible for finding a suitable order for either the construction or the demolition of buildings. They are crucial because they avoid time delays, reworks, and consequently cost overruns. And back on the past, they were displayed in network diagrams, such as this one known as the critical path method, but nowadays they are directly assigned into the Gantt charts. So what are the drawbacks of the presence relationships? First of all, they are not readily available on being based or cut based models, but they highly depend of the planner knowledge or the planner experience. They can be quite time consuming. They are human led, uh, error prone, and costly activity. And few scope modifications normally lead to substantial and massive rewards. And despite of it, its relevance, few paristates has been found in boosting or enhancing the precedence relationship analysis, such as those provided on the screen. So, therefore, a gap was found on the current literature review. And at this stage, I'd like to invite you guys to picture what was the last time that you actually built a construction schedule. So I'm pretty sure that it was such a tedious and slow process. Am I right? So what if I tell you with the the beam with the beam advancements, uh, we could at least automate part of this process. So this is the main objective of these dissertations which is extract a precedence matrix of structural elements for the construction and the demolition of vertical buildings from IFC files automatically, thus generating a machine-readable output, which means that this matrix can be read, read by computers and apply the methodology created here in, into two case studies that I'm going to explain later on. So jump into the methodology. The first step to achieve the methodology was consulting the IFC scheme specification. So even though I found two entities and its attributes to define the topological relationships, any, any practical application was uh, noted, 
uh, in defining presence relationships beforehand. So the way I found to achieve the objective, it was deriving object geometry into those topological relationships by a set of precedence rules that I created. So summarizing all of the methodology into this IDEFO diagram, with a beam model exported to IFC projects, I can automatically extract this precedence matrix by creating a hard code script, script using Python uh, and its libraries, IFC OpenShell and TriMesh. And of course, this whole system is called by the ISOs and by some modeling rules that I created for the modeling stage. So I would like to apologize. I don't have time, enough time to explain the whole script, the whole hard code script, but I could divide it into six, six main blocks, starting with loading the FC file and defining some prerequisites. Uh, the second one would be parsing this IFC file and selecting only constructed objects with geometry. And all of those objects are including a clash collision manage, manager to check whether they collide or not, or not. And then if they do, some crucial information, uh, such as the bottom elevation, top elevation, area, and volume is extracted from them. And then here I'd like to pose and uh, to highlight this part of the methodology that is applying the precedence relationships that I created in two stages. And here is important to explain that the code prompts the user to select if the methodology is being applied for construction of or to demolition. If the methodology is being applied to construction, so the code will approach the, the project by a bottom up analysis. So defining every construction element that are on lower elevations as the predecessor of other objects uh, on higher elevations, obviously, that share boundaries. And if it's demolition, the code will uh, approach it on the other way around. So defining the, the elements on higher elevations as the predecessor of elements on lower elevations. And then finally, all of those elements are inserted in, into a spreadsheet file and save it as a Excel, uh, as Excel file. And now let me go through the results to explain the case studies. The first case study consists of a construction of a small building composed by few geometries such as IFC slabs and IFC columns. And it was designed by me only to test whether those, those rules that I created uh, worked. So the code automatically extracted this precedence relationship matrix on the screen. And the way that I found to validate it was through the charrette test method. So the charrette test method consists of analyzing two uh, to process performed by manual and automatic ways. So I also created this same, uh, the same matrix by myself, visually analyzing uh, the, 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 the building. And then both the manual process took me over 10 minutes while the automatic one exported by the code took only less than 50, 15, seconds, which means that is 41, roughly 41 times faster. And in terms of quality, both of the matrix 100% comply. And the second case study consists of the demolition of a realistic mid-rise beauty. It wasn't designed by me, but rather for commercial purpose. So it's important to highlight that it doesn't comply with all of the modeling rules that I created. And then the code automatically extracted this presence relationship, which consists, which has over 1,000 rows, roughly 1,500 rows. And the way that I found to validate it was the random sampling calculation. So applying this formula 
with a 90% on level of confidence, I randomly selected 55 rows and I visually compared them, I visually validated them, achieving a 98% of his score, which means that only one result wasn't compliant. And then after further investigation, I realized that this object doesn't have geometry, so it was incorrectly designed by the modeler. And if I'm not running out of time, uh, just let me conclude with some insights. So the present relationships analysis are challenging, but highly essential, even though its importance is its relevance field, but studies have been focusing on boosting them. And so this, this is why I create a new methodology to extract this constructive presence matrix automatically and validate it through two different methods. Thus promoting a more economical and sustainable solutions and more profound, profound use of BIM data and comparing the pros against the, the cons uh, among these trends. I would say that, uh, first of all, this methodology open rules for many research include optimization techniques. And by the way, there was another BIM plus students in Ljubljana that used my, uh, my matrix as an input for her optimization work. And this methodology doesn't require any expensive uh, BIM software license, but rather only uses open BIM. Uh, and both the human effort and the time taken to generate the, the results is decreased. And among the drawbacks, I would say, first of all, handling these rule-based systems in order to classify a wide range of construction, construction constraints and designing, designing a model uh, comply with all of the modeling guidelines that were was created. And to conclude, the forthcoming steps, most importantly, will be expanding the scope to other disciplines such as architectural and map systems, sharpening the rules to cover other exceptions, such as assigning automatically a WBS for this code with uh, concert act activities and their durations, so for that, it will be necessary to create a more scalable algorithm. And I would say a more bold forthcoming steps would be enriching the IFC project with all of these precedence uh, relationships that were exported by this methodology and why not creating a for the BIM model automatically. So that's all.